Welcome back to The Morning Blend. This is Solo. He's a German Shepherd with a job. He's a cadaver dog, so he searches for people who are missing and often presumed dead. When Solo was a puppy, he was energetic and unruly, but bit his owner and even chewed his way out of the crate, growling the entire time. One trainer gave up working with the misbehaving pup, but his owner knew that he was smart and just needed to focus his energy. That's right. We're here now with Kat Warren, the owner. She's written about Solo's experience in this book, What the Dog Knows, Scent, Science, and the Amazing Ways Dogs perceive the world. Nice to have you here, Kat. Thanks for having me. I love that Kat wrote a dog book. I know. How, you hear that all the time. I, I do hear that some, and the irony is I'm allergic to cats. So. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Are you a Catherine? I am a Catherine originally. You're a Catherine. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. So you've got um, two dogs, one of them being Solo, the, yes. the dog that we were talking yes. about. Uh, when you had him in the beginning, very unruly, what made you adopt him knowing that he was maybe a, a misbehaving pup? We didn't think he was going to be that way. This was my third shepherd, and we were anticipating the standard obedient, low-key, and the little hellion who roared into our <laughs> lives was a singleton pup, and that can really cause behavior problems. Singleton meaning didn't have Only brothers or sisters? no brothers and sisters, no early litter interaction, which is incredibly important for dogs to learn how to be with other dogs. So he loved people, but he was dog aggressive. Yeah. So some mm -hmm. of the things the dogs can be trained to 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 smell what how, you know, yes. how acute that 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 sense is for them. Things like um, different termites, truffles, crack cocaine, um, mildew, moths, spotted owls, lobsters, um, cows in heat, gas leaks. <laughs> why is it so important that they have this? Why is it nice to know what they can smell? Well, I really think that it's important that if, if there's a smell out there that we want to find and you can isolate it, you can almost always train a dog to help find it. And I think that one of the things we're looking at, especially these days, are with invasive species and endangered species that usually dogs to help um, find them is one of the things that's enormously helpful, besides the standard law enforcement search and rescue um, that we know about. I often think when I think of the, the law enforcement dog, I often think of a German Shepherd. That's the one I tend to see the, the policemen yes. with. Is it typical that they choose that? Because I know from some of your information that even small lap dogs can be used to detect different things on planes and, and such. Yes, actually, I think the military, there's a submarine that has a little Jack Russell Terrier, okay. right? <laughs> so um, sh these days, law enforcement are using both Shepherds, but also Belgian Malinois. And okay. these are the dogs that you probably saw they were famous after the Osama bin Laden mm -hmm. um, uh, event where it was a Belgian Malinois that went in was the dog that went in mm -hmm. um, in that case. And so and we have Dutch Shepherds, too. I think, you know, habit is that the German Shepherd was the classic, and the Belgian Malinois has become a very popular breed for these kinds of functions. Mm -hmm. You make an interesting point that working dogs aren't necessarily miraculous. Their success is often very much linked to the quality of their handlers, their trainers, and their breeders. Yes, and that's, I mean, I, I'm not putting myself out there as a terribly experienced handler. I'm right. still new and learning, but the fact is, is that I think people often give these sort of outsized, almost magical qualities to dogs. And I think that that's a mistake because if we think about what dogs are doing in law enforcement and everything else, we want those dogs to be incredibly well-trained and dependable. And um, that means constant training and that means a good trainer handling the handler who's handling the dog, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's almost that there's a whole team there that makes up a, a good working dog. People have tried to make machines and things to compete with the animals, but regardless, th the dogs are always superior. Is that true? You know, I went in, I'm, in, I'm a newspaper reporter, you know, in my heart of hearts, and so I went in not knowing, knowing that all, all the literature says, well, of course dogs are the best. And um, I went in and yes, so far, Dogs are the best, but partly because of their adaptability, mm -hmm. their mobility, uh, the fact that they don't 
break down in ways that machines do. And every time we turn around and say, a machine is going to replace a dog every, you know, any day now, um, we find out that the dog still has these functions that um, we can't replace. Unbelievable. Mm -hmm. You have a book signing tonight where people can meet you, find out more about your wonderful book, um, and also meet you. It's catwarren.com is the website, but that book signing is tonight at 7 at Boswell Book Company on Downer. Thanks for your time. Thanks oh. for being here. We'll be right back. Thank you.